What is up guys, it is your boy Mac T here, back for another video. And today, sadly we've lost a fallen hero. <laughs> but today we're gonna be focusing on product videography or making a product look nice in the best way we can. Now there's two ways we can go about actually creating or shooting our product. Uh, we have practical, where we have actual lights and actual camera recording, or we could go digital um, and we could create it you know, from scratch in a VFX software or something like that. Now let's start with practical. There's a number of great ways to actually increase the quality of your product on a very low budget or if you don't have any money at all. Like, like your boy. Now I've actually broken this up into five tips that I think can really help you elevate your game to a whole nother level, even if you're on a dirt cheap budget. Now, the first tip is to actually study and prepare your object. And this is pretty much the setup phase before we actually go into shooting it. So we gotta make sure our product looks nice. Now, there are a couple ways you can do this. You can clean the product with some, you know, rubbing alcohol or some wipes. Ideally, you're just trying to get rid of any fingerprints and any kind of dust that may lay on top of it um, and try and get it as clean as you can for the shoot. Now, step two is making sure that you have a decent background or a mat so that the product can stand out when you're shooting it. There's some really cheap ways you can go about doing this. Like you can go get some vinyl sheets and just like stick it to a piece of MDF board. That's what I did at least. Or you could even get wrapping paper, you know, use that, whatever floats your boat. Be creative and think outside the box. And I'm not saying that because it's wrapping paper um, and it's a box. Now you have your product cleaned and your background set up. Step three is all about lighting or tip three. Now lighting is probably the most important way to make your object pop and stand out. It's actually a really cool way you can do this by grabbing like a flashlight or something like that. You can just go around your object and study what makes the actual product look good. What makes the materials pop, what makes the, you know, the textures kind of come to life. And you can base your lighting around that. Now a good rule of thumb, if you're having trouble figuring out what looks nice, or if you don't actually have a lot of lights, is just using a really, really, soft, direct kind of source of light. This will make your product stand out even if you're on a budget and the shadows will actually look relatively nice as well. Now tip four is all about movement. We want to get as much movement in there as we can to make it kind of more stylized and cool. Now you can use a single source of movement such as a dolly or a gimbal, but I recommend actually looking to two sources of movement. Um, you can get these little lazy Susan kind of rotating plates and that's what I use to kind of rotate the product as I had another slider kind of going across it. And what that does, it gives you two axes of rotation of movement um, that kind of can give you some more interesting shots rather than just a single slider kind of moving across screen. And finally, with step five, we have post-production where we can go in and try and clean up our mistakes that we've made or kind of add some more VFX and features to the overall shot. You may wanna add some VFX like smoke or powder or even do like a set kind of extension, which I am kind of doing here. So the sky's the limit and you can kind of do whatever you want. After that, just chuck on a color grade, add some music and uh, voila. Now the good thing is a lot of these tips and practical advice actually translate over into the digital world when you're working in a compositing software or doing VFX kind of stuff. Lighting is super important, movement is super important and that will help you kind of tie everything together. Now 3D work can be super, super useful if you're on an incredibly tight budget and you can't go out and actually shoot your product. If you're looking for a relatively cheap or free software to use, Blender is an incredibly powerful tool that I'd recommend to anyone. I personally use Cinema 4D and Octane, but Blender, um, there's heaps of tutorials out there and it's a really great piece of software, but I prefer Cinema 4D. Now, the first step in the digital production is modeling. Now, modeling is actually a really impressive art form, um, hence why I've chosen to use, you know, pretty much a cylinder, because I can't model really well. Yeah, so there's a lot more educated people out there, so I'll link some videos in the description below that get it, go into more detail, especially around Cinema 4D and modeling in Cinema 4D and how you can go about doing that. But for a rough guide, this is what I did in Cinema 4D. I started with a cylinder, made it editable, extruded two rings at the top and bottom, extruded a top notch piece and put the whole thing in a subdivision. For the cap, I just used another cylinder, made it shorter and bezeled the edges. So basically it's just a bunch of cylinders stacked on top of each other. 
very complex. Now step two is about texturing our models. Um, and again, texturing is kind of its own art form within itself. So hats out to the people who do texturing all day long. Now, usually I recommend Polygon for all your texturing needs. It's a really cheap platform and I really, really like it. Um, plus it's kind of a, a good community of people organizing and running the website. But for this tutorial, I actually only used Octane materials because like I was trying to go for more of a neat clean cut design. So I didn't really have to put any surface imperfections and stuff like that in there. Um, so it's actually really simple. You can just follow along with Octane. But for this model, I only ended up using four textures. So again, very simple. For the first texture, we had a glass texture, which was a specular material with an index of 1.52. We also had a liquid material, which was another specular material with an index of 1.333 and a slight hue in the transition tab. And lastly, we had a metal material, which was a metallic material with a roughness of 0.05. Now step three is all about lighting. And luckily for us, a lot of the practical lighting techniques actually transfer over into the digital world. Now, when I was texturing the object, I actually used a HDRI for reference. And I got that HDRI from HDRI Haven. It's basically a bunch of free online HDRIs that you can download, really high quality as well. So I recommend you check them out. Now it's actually up to you with what you want to do in your world and how you want to light your object. For example, with one of the scenes, um, I actually just used a bunch of octane lights and I put them in like a cylinder and cut off the edge of the cylinder. Um, so they acted more like real lights and what you'd expect when you're actually practically lighting something. For that setup, I just used three main lights and then one light to illuminate the background. Again, this is up to your imagination, so be creative. Tip four is all about set building. And again, set building is relatively free and open and up to your imagination with what you want to do. You can go the super easy method of extruding a spline to create like a seamless background, or you could get a bunch of objects and a bunch of 3D models and chuck it in your scene and make everything look nice. Check out Turbo Squid and Free 3D for some really awesome and free 3D models. Um, there are some ones that are a bit of bit expensive so just keep an eye out but there's heaps of free stuff out there. Tip 5 is all about movement and as I mentioned before in the practical kind of examples movement can help you kind of spice up your shot and make it you know seem a lot more impressive than it actually is. The good thing about a 3D environment is that you can place the camera literally anywhere. It's up to your imagination with what you want to do. You can go for full on 360 shots, go, go through the objects like <laughs> it's up to you whatever you want to do and step six is all about rendering i'm going to leave a video in the description below that goes into more details about how to render and how to export out of octane kind of what settings are right for your computer and what you should set up for yourself and that's it guys put it all together slap on some music and now you have some sick product video ready to go Thanks guys for making it to the end of this video. I hope you guys liked it. Um, it was a bit of a fun video to make and hopefully, yeah, you learned something from it or you didn't learn something. And as always guys, make sure that you create with whatever you have, no matter the situation and go out and make some awesome stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.